Hi, I'm Kara Schuler. I'm the developmental editor of Silvergrain Classics magazine. We've been making a series of videos about the new series of developing chemicals from Jobo. And today I'm going to be talking about the Alpha, which is the black and white developing set. Um, instead of uh, showing you how to mix the chemicals and all the different steps like we've done in some of the other videos, today I'm going to get more into the background of what makes this black and white developing set a little bit different than other ones that are on the market today. Now to do that, I'm going to have to get into a little bit of chemistry, but please don't fast forward, don't click away. Um, it's not going to be boring and it's not going to be too difficult. I promise you, if I can understand this, you can understand it. And it actually is very interesting and it might be helpful to you when you're thinking about, you know, the balance between getting sharpness and fine grain and bigger grain and all that kind of thing. So please stick with me and we'll just make this as simple as possible. Now, green is actually little chunks of silver bromide on the film stock, on the emulsion, okay? You can think about them as like little rocks and um, they are silver and bromide together combined. Now, what happens is when the light hits the film stock, hits the emulsion, it kind of makes like little dotted lines or little cracks in the rocks where the developer will come in and it will split the silver from the bromide during the development process. Now, everybody knows who has uh, silver at home. If you don't clean it, it tarnishes, it turns darker, right? That's what actually happens on the film. The silver tarnishes or it oxidizes, it turns darker. And those are then the darker parts of your film, okay, of your image. Now, this may seem a little bit weird because, um, you know, if the light hits it and then that part that the light hits turns darker, that seems a little bit strange, right? Because you would want the part that the light hit to actually be lighter, but we are talking about a negative here, okay? So on your negative, the darker parts, when you then actually print them or whatever, then they are the lighter parts. So. That's the very basics, I hope that made sense. So about grains, some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, just like little mix of rocks or gravel or something. Um, now there's always a mix. Every emulsion has a mix of larger grains and smaller grains, but it's kind of the proportion is uh, one of the things that's very important about that and why there are actual film emulsion designers and, and chemists. Um, so it's interesting that if you think about um, films that are more sensitive, they are more grainy and everybody kind of knows that just instinctively. Those um, very sensitive films, they tend to be also quite grainy. And the reason for that is that to get a film to be more sensitive, you need to have it catch more of the light, obviously. So what's the best way to do that? Well, if you think about um, these grains are not actually touching each other. You know, it's like there's always um, a lot of space between molecules, right? So if you have a limited amount of light, um, the light photons hitting the grain, what you want to do is have larger grains so they will be more likely to catch one of the rays of light that is coming through. Because um, if you have only smaller ones, they are less likely to catch that light. So I hope that kind of made sense too. So I've just been talking about the graininess of the actual emulsion of your film stock. But um, the graininess of your image doesn't only depend on which film stock you choose, it also depends on how you develop it. And that's where we come to today's developer. Um, you have to think about each grain as being a whole bunch of crystals that are stuck together, actually. Now the developer comes in, like I said, and it kind of, um, it goes into these places where the light made kind of a crack or a dotted line and it splits it apart. But some developers work more on just the surface of the grain and some developers will go into the inside of the grain. And that affects what these grains in your image actually look like. I've been talking about developer kind of as a generic term for the whole set, but in most kits, there's the developing solution, the stop bath and the fix. So what happens with the stop bath and the fix? 
Well, after the developer is, you know, finished doing its job, um, which is breaking apart the silver from the bromide in the parts of the, the film that were hit by light, actually you need to stop it because the developer will eventually also work on those crystals that were not hit by light and make them dark as well. So the developer works in an alkaline environment. Um, and so usually the stop bath would then be acidic and that will stop this development process from happening. The fix also works in an acidic environment and that's what actually washes off all the silver bromides which were not hit by light so that you can then have less of those dark areas on your film. A little side note that's going to become more important as we talk about the specific developer is that grain reacts to physical stressors as well as chemical processes. So physical stressors would be things like temperature changes or um, acidity changes or actual, you know, just water even washing over it and this kind of thing, rotation versus inversion. So um, the grain also is influenced by these physical stressors and we will see how that is important when you are choosing your developer. Now, a lot of people really value very sharp images. Um, not everybody, but a lot of people are looking for very sharp images. And there's kind of a misconception that to get the sharpest image, you need the finest grain. But that's actually not really the case. And um, an easy way to think about that is to think about if you had like flour that you bake with or, or baby powder or something, that's very, very fine grained. Um, if you compare it to something like sugar. Now, if you want to make an absolutely straight, fine line um, on a table between where there is baby powder and where there is not, or if you want to make the same fine line between where there is sugar and where there is not, it's kind of easy if you think about it, there's always going to be a few stray grains of baby powder or flour that it's really hard to get them off of the table. Whereas with the sugar, it's very easy to really remove all of those grains of sugar off of the part of the table that doesn't have it. So that's how you can think about the sharpness in a photo as related to the grain. Now, the problem is that, of course, you could then say, oh, then I just need to get, you know, really big grains and that'll be really sharp. But that obviously is also not true. <laughs> so the art is finding the balance of the relationship of fine grains to large grains to get sharpness. So now we know we want to have that balance of, uh, you know, sharpness, fine grain, big green, all that kind of stuff and we can influence it with the developer that we choose. Now, there were in the past some developers that were really famous for finding exactly the right balance, um, and Jobo is carrying on in this tradition. Now, Jobo is a company that's known for its rotation processors, um, and that's actually a really nice way to develop film. You use half the chemicals that you need for um, inversion, and you can also kind of put it on and then leave the room. You don't have to stand there and, and you know, invert your drum a whole bunch of times. So uh, the Jobo Alpha is actually optimized for rotation, but you can also use it with inversion and it will also give you great results. So I was speaking before about the physical stressors on grain. Now we all know stress is bad. When you stress grain, it becomes less pleasing in shape. So this kit actually does a great job of reducing the physical stressors on the grain. Um, one of the ways it does that is by reducing the acidity of the entire process so that you have less of a change when you go from the alkaline first part of the process to the acidic second part. And actually, instead of having an acidic stop bath, you just use water. And the fix, which is also usually acidic, is neutral. So that definitely reduces a lot of that stress. Um, it's also engineered to reduce the stress during rotation. So it does actually result in a much more pleasing grain characteristic. I have to say at this point that this is a test video about this kit, but we're not going to compare it to other kits and see which one we think is better. Um, what we did was actually Mavan, who is the editor-in-chief of Silvergrain Classics, and I 
both took out different films that we know well, in cameras that we know well, in situations that we've shot in before. And we took those films and developed all of them in this developer because we can compare those results to the results that we know from having used other developers. Um, so let me just talk about what films we actually did use. Um, we, well, also the formats. We used 35 millimeter medium and large format in both 4x5 and 5x7. We used one Ilford FP4, which is a 125 speed film, and that film was expired. Now, the interesting thing about expired film is that it usually gets grainier and it loses sensitivity, so we thought that would be an interesting thing to test. Um, we also used uh, Ilford HP5 400, Kodak Tri-X, which is 400, and we had one roll, which we then pushed to 3200, which should really increase the graininess in my experience, and also Adox, the CHS 100 too. But now on to results, finally. So a first look at the negatives shows that there's some really nicely balanced gray tones. Looking through the loop, you notice that the grain is really pleasing. And uh, with the grainier films, it really did a great job. Large format doesn't require the finest grain, but the micro contrasts we got with this developer really supported the strengths of the format. My own experience uh, was with very low light photography on stage. I recently used a different developer and the other developer I used got a much more noticeable grain than the Jobo Alpha. This is always a, a matter of taste. So if you like the grainier look, then the alpha is probably not for you. But um, I thought this got actually really nice results. So although we didn't show the whole process of using the kit, I did want to talk about it a little bit. Um, it's very easy to use. You have the developer liquids part A and B. The stop bath is just water, um, as I said before, and the fix is a powder that dissolves easily. Um, the fix is designed to be a two-step fix. So first you use fix that you already used once before, an old fix, and then you use a fresh fix solution. Um, a good thing about this method and the kit is that you can't overfix. So that's definitely a positive thing. Um, the final rinse is easier. It's milder to the film and it uses less water. Um, for those of you who already have a processor and you've been usually using it for your color films, this is actually a great addition to the you know, world of developing chemicals because you can use your processor, it's so convenient, and you still get really high quality results that you, know, you might have thought you could only get with uh, inversion processes. Another good thing about this uh, kit is that it comes with a great manual and the manual has really good developing times for a lot of common film stocks. And it also has um, really clear directions for um, in extension times if you want to push your film. So doing this test was actually very interesting and I said that we did not intend to compare different developing kits in this test. However, we do want to do that in a future video. Um, we would take similar film stock or the same film stock in uh, the same cameras and then develop it in different developing solutions. So uh, if you don't want to miss that, definitely subscribe to the channel and you will be notified when we post that.